Kuzumo Zespa in my DeLorean. War is over, I'm a piece of my DeLorean. The story is stumped, Star Wars historians deep in debate, but they play at Ben against Ram Renegade. Good morning, welders. Uh, as you can see, today we're not in the welding lab because today we're going to talk about educational materials, uh, welding rod specifications and such. So one of the first things I want to talk about, if you're new to welding, is a good welding textbook. This is the Modern Welding Textbook, written by Athouse Turnquist, Bowditch, Bowditch, and Bowditch. It's a pretty big book. Uh, not including the index. We're looking at over 850 pages. It's about a hundred bucks. But this is the kind of book that you can sit on your bookcase or in your shop and refer to it for the rest of your life. Another set of books that are great are the Hobart manuals. And this is what they use to train at the Hobart School of Welding. These are little paperback books. And they contain about 100 pages each. This particular one is on shielded metal arc welding basic. Here's one on oxyacetylene welding and cutting. Gas tungsten arc welding. This one is actually from the Lincoln Electric Company, also on TIG welding. Now these books are also from the Hobart School of Technology. Gas metal arc welding pipe. Gas tungsten arc welding pipe and tubing. And then also from the Lincoln Electric Company, and this is free, is a nice little book on safety. The more knowledge and the more facts that you have, the better off you're going to be. So let's talk about shielded metal arc welding or stick welding this morning. And the electrodes, types of electrodes, how to choose which type of electrodes you want. Now I'm going to be referring, first of all, to the Hobart book on page 41 chapter 15 and one of the first things it tells you about is electrode classification for instance an E7018-B2 rod and it tells you what those mean the E stands for electrode the 70 is tensile strength the 1 is for welding position the 8 is for type of coating and current and the suffix of B2 tells you the chemical composition of the deposited weld metal. You probably already knew that. Now, let's go back to that third number after the E70, the 18. The position number. Position 1 means it can be used in all positions. Flat, horizontal, vertical, overhead. Position 2 rods can only be used in the flat and horizontal position, like a 7024. And position 4 rods can be used flat, horizontal, vertical down only, and overhead. Now, there are other suffixes you may find on your rods. For instance, a suffix of minus one tells you that this rod has increased toughness for 7018s and increased ductility for a 7024. Also, we might find an H4 
which indicates the maximum hydrogen diffused in millimeters per hundred grams. Example, H4 equals 4 milliliters per hundred grams of hydrogen in the rods. Then we also have rod groupings, the F1 through the F4 groupings. For instance, the F1 is the high deposition grouping of rods, and those are your EXX20, EXX24, EXX27, EXX28. F2 are your mild penetrating rods, EXX12, EXX13, EXX14. F3 are your deep penetrating rods, for instance your 6010 and your 6011. And your F4 are all positioned low hydrogen rods, uh, 7015, 7016, 7018. But why? Why do we want low hydrogen rods? Because hydrogen in the weld causes cracking and embrittlement. So the less hydrogen we can add to the rods, the better off we're going to be. So that's just some of the good kind of information that you can get from one of these Hobart books. Now another thing we want to talk about is different rods and polarities and amperages and blah blah blah. Excuse me. Uh, for instance, let's talk about a 6010. How about one of the old red colored 6010s, or also known as a Fleet Weld 5P? Now that is a DC plus only, or reverse polarity rod, usable for mild steel, and in cut. <coughs> Thanks. All right, we're back. Uh, 330 second size rod you only want to put 40 through 75 amps through it whereas if you go up to a eighth inch you can run it 70 to 130 it can go all the way up to a quarter inch size actually goes up to 5 16 where you can put up to 400 amps through it now that's a deep digging rod all right we'll move on down to the uh, low alloy high tensile steel for instance, a 7010-A1, also known as a Shield Arc 85. It runs on negative, or I'm sorry, reverse polarity. And in the 332nd size, you can give it 50 to 90 amps. In its largest size, which is 316, it can take 140 to 225 amps. Then we have rods specifically for stainless steel. For instance, a 30815, also called a stain weld 308. It is reverse polarity. Yeah, smallest size is 332nd. You can give it 30 to 70 amps. And its largest size is a quarter inch, 150 to 225 amps. Now, if we want to come down and talk about some more specialty rods, we can talk about the bronze and aluminum rods, like, for instance, AlumaWeld, and that is also a reverse polarity. And its smallest size is 332nd, and it needs 20 to 55 amps. Its largest size is 316 and it's going to want 85 to 235 amps. Then we have rods for cast iron. For instance, the ferro weld. And it can run on uh, reverse polarity DC, or it can run on AC, and it's one inch size, 80 to 100 amps. Then we have our rods specifically for hard surfacing. For instance, face weld, which will run uh, DC reverse polarity, or AC, comes in 316 size, 
60 to 150 amps. Now this little electrode chart that I've been reading from here is also from the Lincoln Electric Company. And on the back it lists all types of welds or of rods. This is a doggone good piece of information to stick in your notebook, stick in your truck, have in your shop. Yeah, I know your old pros going, I know all them. Well, maybe there's something you haven't come across yet, and you will. If that's the case, why not get one of these Another from important thing to talk about is our eye safety. I'm going to be referring to this arc welding safety book from Lincoln Electric. Again, it's free. Call them. Ask them for one. And we're going to talk about shades for welding. For instance, if you're doing shielded metal arc welding with an electrode size of less than three, three what? I don't know. One thirty second inch. Anyway. With a current of less than 70s, it says your minimum protective shade number needs to be a 70. But the suggested shade number is nothing. All right, that's a little bit weird. Let's go down here to MIG. If you're MIGging on less than 50 currents, I'm sorry, TIG. If you're TIGging on less than 50 currents, the minimum required is 8, but they recommend a 10. I'd always go with the higher number. Protect your eyes. They're the only set you're going to get. Uh, here we go. MIG. Say you're MIGging at 160 amps. Minimum shade protection is a 10, but they recommend a 12. Always go with that higher recommended surface. There's also some information in here on working in confined spaces which you're never going to get my fat ass into. Um, exhaust versus filtration. There's just a lot of good information in here. And if you don't like to read, you're in luck. Because that same phone call to the Lincoln Electric Company will get you this lovely DVD for free that you can get all this information on. All right, that's my lesson for today. Tune in tomorrow when we're going to start building our project for the Weld.com Big Cash Money Contest. If you don't know about that, go to Weld.com and check it out. All right? All right, be safe. Jar Jar would speak